After recently making the swap to Orca Slicer and buying a 0.2mm nozzle, my last few videos have showcased some awesome FDM miniatures. So today, by popular request, I'm going to be showing you my full in-depth settings for Orca Slicer that I used to print all those minis. Please do keep in mind that these settings have been dialed in for an Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro, specifically one equipped with a 0.2mm nozzle. These are the settings that I have been fine-tuning over the last few videos and that you've seen me using to print these miniatures, and they're the same settings that I'm going to keep using on this printer for the foreseeable future. As well as that, today I will also be showing you how to adjust these settings for slightly faster printing of larger miniatures, as well as going over what settings you need to tweak if you're still using the stock 0.4mm nozzle as opposed to the 0.2. Without further ado, let's jump straight in. Okay, so opening up Orca Slicer, I've gone ahead and just re-imported our Tiefling Druid from the support settings video, uh, and the first thing that we're going to do is come up and tweak some of the overall printer settings. So up in the printer settings. Now the Neptune 3 doesn't have a 0.2mm nozzle option by default, so instead we're going to be coming through here and highlighting a few settings that I've tweaked. Basic information, machine g-code, multi-material have all been left at default, Extruder is where we're going to make our first few changes. The main thing to note in here is I have changed the nozzle diameter to 0.2mm. Most of the settings that actually pertain to the 0.2mm nozzle are still handled in the print settings as opposed to up here in the printer settings, but I still like changing this just to make sure that anything that's happening in the background is also adjusting down to that 02 nozzle size. The minimum and maximum layer heights have been left at the Neptune 3's default, which is 0.08 minimum and 0.32 maximum. Some printers will be able to go a slightly finer detail than 0.08, so you can feel free to leave that on whatever it would be. 0.05, 0.06, some printers are sitting in that range. For the maximum, I've left this at the default 0.32. Uh, you'll never be printing that thick with a 0.2 nozzle. I'm pretty sure that the maximum thickness you can do is actually the diameter of the nozzle, so you could drop this down to 0.2 if you needed. I'm pretty sure that most of the retraction settings here have been left at default because I actually handle this specifically in my filament settings, so we'll be overriding these in a moment anyway. For motion abilities, I've gone ahead and turned off emit limits to g-code. This is very important. This will be ticked by default and you want to disable it. If you leave this ticked, what it will do is overwrite your printer's settings whenever you run G-Code exported by Orca Slicer. But the speed and acceleration limitations will actually become your printer's default if you leave this box ticked. Okay, so now we can go ahead and save these. You'll probably want to create a new profile here if you don't already have a 0.2 nozzle profile. Now we can close out of the print settings and come into our filament settings. Now we can adjust our filament settings. I've been using Alagu's standard PLA, as i found that it has a nice finish for raw prints, and more importantly, has a slight flexibility, which is great for strong minis and easy support removal. What these settings will do is give us a few overrides to those initial print settings, and a few additional settings specific to filament. Pretty much everything at the top here I'm going to leave at default. The main thing of note on this page is going to be our print temperature and volumetric limitations. For the 0.2 nozzle, I've thrown these on 220 degrees just to ensure nice even flow throughout the print. I've left the build plate temp at 60. If you're having issues with bed adhesion, which is something I'll cover a little bit later, you might consider bumping this up to 65 and seeing if that helps. Volumetric limitations. I have set this at 50. I believe that the default for a 0.4 nozzle is 60, but because a 0.2 millimeter nozzle is smaller, it's going to be harder for the printer to push material through at the same speeds as a 0.4. I've found that 50 is a pretty good setting for this number. For cooling, I'm pretty sure that all of this is still at default settings, but you can go ahead and double check that with your own. Setting overrides. This is where I'm handling retraction length because I like to do it based on filament and nozzle size. So as you can see here, this is my Elegoo generic PLA profile specifically for a 0.2mm nozzle because I've found that it requires a little bit more retraction for clean prints. Specifically, my retraction length has been set to 2.75 as I've found that's been perfect for getting nice clean prints. For printing miniatures specifically, it's really, really recommended that you do not use Z-Hop. It can lead to additional stringing and print artifacts that are going to be way more noticeable on smaller models. My retraction speed I have dropped to 28 millimeters a second. I've found that with 2.75 on length and 28 on retraction speed, this gives a really clean print. And my detraction speed has been set to 40. Advanced, multi-material, and notes, again, all left at default. Right, on to the main event, starting down here with our quality settings. My layer height, again, is at the printer's minimum, 0.08 millimeters. Again, if your printer can go lower than this, feel free to, 0.05, 0.06. I know something like the Bamboo Labs A1, you could have this sitting on 0.06. 
First layer height. This is really important for bed adhesion and keeping prints stuck to the build plate. I have put this at the highest it can be for a 0.2mm nozzle because you do not want to be printing layers thicker than the diameter of your nozzle. My line width settings, I have kind of pushed back and forth a little bit until I've finally settled on these numbers. So the default is set at 0.2. Our first layer is set at 0.3. Just trying to push as much material onto that first layer as possible. Again, just trying to make sure that prints will stay stuck to the bed. And since I've changed the first layer height to 0.2 and the first layer to 0.3, I've had very, very few prints that have come unstuck from the build plate. My outer walls, 0.205. I've found that just that tiny little additional bit has really helped in cleaning prints up. And my inner walls are 0.245, which has just been good for stable wall printing. My top surface is 0.21. If you're having top faces that have little holes or pockets in them, potentially upping this would help, but 0.21 has been a perfect balance for me. And then both infill settings I've left at 0.25 and supports at 0.2. Seam position I have put at back. If we go ahead and slice our plate here. Having seam position on back is great. You just have to make sure that your miniatures are actually facing the front of the printer. What this does is anywhere that these little seams are going to appear will hopefully be on the back of the mini and not somewhere that you're going to be looking at. If this character had imported rotated around 180 degrees you'd be getting all of that on the face and the important details of the front of the mini. So just making sure that it's rotated correctly is very important. Everything else in the seams should be default. Slice gap closing radius I'm pretty sure is on the default at 0.49 and the resolution is at 0.012. Elephant foot compensation I've left at 0.1 millimeters, but again if you're having big issues with build plate adhesion you could potentially just remove this and make it zero. For my wall generator I have left this on classic. I am aware that using arachne can be better for getting even slightly thinner details on certain pieces, but I have found that classic gives me more reliably strong prints. My walls printing order is inner outer. If you're having issues with some of your exterior surfaces looking like the layers aren't quite matching up, I have seen people recommend printing outer inner. So if you're having slight surface imperfections or more obvious layer lines than you would like, that might be a good setting to change to outer inner and see what your results are. I've turned on avoid crossing walls. This helps the nozzle not to hit already printed parts as it's going. My bridging flow ratio is 0.95. Uh, the others there are default. Thick bridges is turned off. Thick internal bridges is turned on. Overhangs. Detect overhangs wall is on. Make overhangs printable is off. This is something that you could experiment with, but I have found more often than not make overhangs printable has led to issues when gluing models together, especially if they're multi-part minis. So I just turn those off unless I'm looking to play around with making a model a little bit less support intensive. And extra perimeters on overhangs is also turned off. Moving over to strength. I have my wall loops on three. If you're finding that your prints are a little weaker than you would maybe like them, you could try turning this up to four. But I do think this is a good balance of strength versus print time. Top surface pattern is at default. My top shell layers are set to four. I've found that this is perfectly enough for miniatures. You probably don't want to drop down to three, but any more than five is absolutely unnecessary in my opinion. And I've put top shell thickness to zero, just so that that isn't overriding the layer count above it. And exactly the same thing for bottom shells, four layers and zero millimeter shell thickness. And 25% on the overlap setting. Uh, infill density I have dropped to 10%. This is what I have found to be a good balance between strength and speed. Again, if you're having prints that you feel are a little weaker than you would like, you could try upping this to 15, 20, maybe even 25%. I have changed my infill pattern to crosshatch, which I like because it alternates the direction of the infill itself, rather than printing the whole thing in a grid. Then I have disabled gap fill and changed the infill slash wall overlap to 25%. Now for the speed settings. Print speed and flow ratios from back in the quality settings are the two things that I have been playing around with the most. To get a good balance of great looking prints, but also slightly faster printing times. And when I say slightly faster, these are still incredibly slow speeds. These are tiny miniatures that we're trying to get the most detail out of possible without having a bunch of very visible layer lines, so we're going to be wanting to print these slowly. My first layer is set to 20 millimeters a second along with first layer infill, and I have set my number of slow layers to 3. For my outer walls I've dropped this all the way down to 18 millimeters a second, but where I make up for that print speed is by increasing the inner walls to about 35. Small perimeters are on 50% with small perimeter threshold on zero. 
Both sparse and internal solid infill are both also set to 35mm a second. Top surface and gap infill have both been set to 25mm a second. My support speed is at 30mm a second. This is something that's fine to have a little bit quicker than your outer walls. They don't need to look great. But you really don't want to be printing so fast that you're risking knocking them over or having weakened support material. And the support interface, which is the little platforms it creates for pieces, is set to 40. Down to our overhang settings. Turning on both slow down for overhangs and slow down for curled perimeters, I have found has given me more successful and stable prints. Not having to worry so much about the print head maybe knocking into pieces that have curled up off of support material or on large overhangs. And you can see all of the settings here for overhang and bridging speed, which I don't think I've tweaked all that much. Travel speed is on 150, which is the recommended for the printer. And acceleration I have set to zero at the top here. Orca Slicer will try and do this weird acceleration curve thing where the printer looks like it's printing in slow motion. And in the case of the Neptune 3, sounds like it's dying. So I've just gone ahead and put this on zero, which has essentially nullified all of these random bell curve acceleration settings. Now, moving over to support settings. I'll quickly run you through my overall settings here so that you can copy these down for yourself, but I do have a full dedicated video that I would highly recommend you watch after this one. If you're printing minis that require supports, that video is going to show you how to get the best quality out of those models, how to orient them correctly so that you're not creating unwanted overhangs or scarring on your miniatures, as well as how to properly use these support settings. When to keep them automatic, when to swap them to manual, and when to blend the two. Obviously I do have supports enabled, and by default I have this set to Tree Auto. It is about 50-50 whether a model will require Tree Auto or Tree Manual. For example, our druid here is actually using manual support painting rather than the automatic settings seen here. I've done this by in the objects menu coming down to our druid and changing the support type to manual. I've then gone in and used the support painting tool to paint in all of the areas here that need supports. But again, my full supports tutorial is in the card, down in the description. Go and check that out to make sure that you're getting the most out of these settings. The style of tree supports that I use is tree slim. Again, these are very small miniatures. We don't want to be bulking up so much support that we can't get it off after it's printed. Threshold angle is set to 30%, as I found this is a good balance. On build plate only, I do have ticked as often as I can. What this means is that supports will only ever start on the build plate. They will not build up on the model. For example, something like this support here, rather than starting down on this one that is built from the build plate, might instead try and attach onto the top of his knee and build up from there, adding additional scarring. For some models, you might want to allow the supports to build up from the model, but I would highly recommend if your model allows for you to only have supports on the build plate, do that every time. Support critical regions only stays off, and remove small overhangs I've put on. Rough layers are zero. Then we move down to our advanced settings. For the top Z distance. Given that we're using a 0.2mm nozzle and support interface on top of our supports, it means that it's actually going to be pretty easy to pull this away, because there's a very very thin line of support material holding your print to the supports. The best rule of thumb that I've found for top Z distance is to have it be twice your layer height. Unless twice your layer height would be under 0.15. For example, if you were using a 0.06mm layer height on something like the Bamboo Labs A1, you would probably want to instead make this three times, but you always want to keep it a multiple of your layer height. I'm hoping that that makes sense. So for me, I have a 0.08 layer height, which I have doubled to get my 0.16 top Z distance. If you were using a 0.06 nozzle, Obviously double that is 0.12, which is under 0.15, so instead I would do 3 times 0.06, which would bring us to a top Z distance of 0.18. Bottom Z distance is not important because we have on build plate only enabled. If your model required you to allow support material to build up on the model, you might want to set this to either your layer height or double your layer height. Base pattern I've got on rectangular with 3mm spacing, this will just make your supports a little bit more structurally sound, but not so much that they'll be impossible to remove later down the line. Pattern angle on 0, top interface layers I have set to 2, and the same for bottom interface layers. My interface pattern is set on default, but you could have a play around with this if you wanted to. For me I've found the default works just fine. Top interface spacing is 0.2mm, which will mean that essentially there is a thickness of the nozzle between every line. 
Bottom interface spacing is again irrelevant because our support settings are on the build plate only, but you could probably also set this to 0.2 or 0.4 and be just fine. Normal support expansion is on zero. For miniatures I've found that you don't need it. What that will do, if you required it, is it would essentially give you a little bit of extra leeway around. Support object XY distance, this is the distance horizontally that your supports can print away from the miniature. I've put this on 0.35 which I've found to be a perfectly fine setting. And max bridge length is set to 10. For the tree support branch distance, I've put this on 5mm with the diameter being 1.2. If you were finding that you were getting frequent breaks on your support material due to them being a little bit too thin, you could try pushing this up to 1.6 or maybe 2mm if you really had to, but I've found that 1.2 has been great for me. Tree support branch angle is set to 45, with support wall loops being on 2. What this means is that the internal structure of our support material is going to be a little bit more stable. As we can see here, all of these supports have at minimum two rings, some of the infill will increase that a little bit in places, but for the most part we're getting two walls on all of these supports which will just kind of help to ensure that they make it through the printing process without getting snapped off. Adaptive layer height and auto brim width, I have both of those ticked. Again, if you wanted to control how much material was around the base of your supports, you could untick auto brim width and set a custom value there, but I've found that the automatic tool is perfectly fine for that. Jumping over to others, I do have a skirt loop on, but I don't know if this is absolutely necessary. I just like to make sure that the nozzle is clear and clean during print, and I have that skirt one millimeter away from the model and two layers high. The speed for that, I've put at 50. That can just be a quick run around the model and making sure that the print head hasn't built up additional material. Brim type, I have turned to no brim. Now, this is something that if you are again struggling with build plate adhesion, you could turn this on. For me specifically, I find that as long as my minis are kind of sunk into the build plate or as long as that first layer is secure enough that they're not going to be easily peeled up, I don't need to worry about a brim, but again if you're having adhesion issues that might be another good place to go. Other than that everything here should be default, but again just double check that with your settings. And that is how I print miniatures with a 0.2mm nozzle. These are the settings that have produced me some fantastic FDM miniatures. They have a great surface finish, the supports are easy enough to remove, which makes them a blast to paint, and even more fun when you're putting them on the game table. However, some miniatures might be a little bit too large to print with such slow settings, so how can we accommodate these settings for slightly quicker printing of some larger miniatures? But before we do move on, it would mean a great deal to me if you would consider leaving a comment down below. Let me know what you're excited to print next, or if you're going to give these settings a try. Let me know how your settings differ from mine, or even just say hi. That's just because commenting is the single best way that you can let YouTube know that you like what I'm doing. It helps the channel to grow and makes it far more likely for my videos to pop up on your homepage again in the future. Alright, let's get back to it. Now when I'm printing larger miniatures, let's say something like a dragon. This is the new copper dragon from Rescale Miniatures. Here we're going to be changing a few of our settings just to accommodate for slightly faster printing of larger scale miniatures. If we slice this with the settings we just went over, we're looking at about a five and a half hour print just for the head. So this would easily be days worth of printing to get the full dragon done. So what can we do to help speed that along just a little bit? First and foremost, on larger miniatures, I'm perfectly happy to set my layer height to 0.12. I find that that is a good middle ground between quality and speed, and everything else in the quality tab stays the same. And don't forget to also adjust your Z top distance in the support settings. I tend to stick with that same calculation of two times the layer height, but with thicker layers you can test hovering that value from anywhere between one times and two times your layer height. So in our case anywhere between 0.12mm and 024 The only other setting that I change on large miniatures is again that tree support branch diameter. I recommended not going as high as 2 on smaller minis, but on larger ones like this I will happily hover this between 2 and 2.5. Just by changing the layer height to 1.2 and this branch diameter to 2mm, we're going to see a decent decrease in print time. And now the print time is sitting just under 4 hours, which is much more reasonable for this model in my opinion. And again, these supports even look like they could be pushed up to 2.5. So that's just a few simple tweaks that really won't be noticeable on giant models like this, but they easily decrease our print time by 20 to 30%. Now finally, for anyone that is still using a 0.4mm nozzle, here's how we can adjust these settings to accommodate for that as well. Okay, so let's say you're still using a 0.4mm nozzle. First of all, I do highly recommend as much as I can to try out a 0.2mm. 
the quality increase is truly phenomenal. But for those of you that are using a 0.4mm nozzle, let's go ahead and change some stuff. Line width for a 0.4 I would put on 0.4, I would put first layer on 0.45, outer walls on 0.41, inner walls on 0.43, top surface on 0.41, sparse infill on 0.45, solid internal infill on 0.45, and supports on 0.41. Those are my flow settings for a 0.4mm nozzle. Everything else on this first page can be left the same. Moving over to strength, I do tend to keep this on three walls, but with the thicker layers you could potentially knock this down to two. If you're using a 0.4mm nozzle, you may potentially want to drop your support wall loops down to one. I still wouldn't necessarily recommend this, as it will make the supports a little bit easier to knock over, as they will just be a single loop of material. However, with support generation this small and fiddly, chances are it's going to be a little bit more difficult to remove. What I mean by that is if we look through our miniature now, a lot of these support materials you would not just be able to kind of peel away from themselves, you would actually have to physically snip them off of the model. The only other thing to note if you are doing a 0.4mm nozzle print is that you're going to want to make sure that your printer settings are set back to your 0.4mm nozzle profile just for all of that stuff on the back end that uses the nozzle diameter setting from the topmost printer settings, and chances are you're going to have to adjust your retraction settings for your filament. For retraction length I've dialed this into 2.8 which is just a slight bit more than our 0.2mm nozzle settings and I've changed the speed up to 35mm a second. I've found that the faster retraction speed works better on slightly larger nozzles like the 0.4. With all that covered please do keep in mind that these settings have been dialed in on my Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro with a 0.2mm nozzle using Elegoo's standard PLA. So if you are using other printers chances are your results may vary but I'm still hoping that this will be a great launching point for you to figure out your settings as well. It's also worth taking into consideration that these settings are for a decently well calibrated printer. Nothing crazy, mind you, but just make sure that your belts are tensioned, your build plate is clean and level, and that your e-steps are dialed in, and you'll be good to go. With all that said, I hope this video was helpful, and that you have as much fun as I do printing some miniatures with these settings. Leave your comments down below to let YouTube know that you like what you watched and to keep me popping up on your homepage from time to time. Please do consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel to stick around. But most importantly, thank you so much for watching. And as always, have a good one.